Right now, we find ourselves in a crowded subway station where thousands of people are making their daily commute to and from work. Our friend Josh here is one of these daily commuters. Josh starts his daily commute every morning at the railway station and finishes up at the National Museum where he currently holds an internship. He begins his commute to work on the C subway line, which he takes until the stop at the National Theater, where he transfers onto the E line, which takes him all the way to the National Museum subway stop. When he is ready to commute back home from work, he must take the same subway lines, but in reverse order. In this case, he'll start on the E line, which he'll take all the way to the National Theater Station, and then transfer to the C line, which will take him back to where he started at the railway station. Notice that the subway lines were in reverse order from when he started his commute in the morning to when he commuted back home in the afternoon. However, the actual distance traveled remained the same. So let's start off by looking at the sum of two terms. Here we have A and B, they could be any real numbers. And we wanna know exactly what the commutative property looks like. So here we know that A plus B equals A plus B, it equals itself. For the commutative property, we're just gonna take those two terms and reverse the order. So now we have A plus B is equal to B plus A. And we're also gonna see how this holds for multiplication where A times B equals B times A. So for this lesson, we're going to explore why addition and multiplication are commutative, and also why subtraction and division are not commutative. So now we're gonna go ahead and look at an example that shows why the commutative property holds under addition. So the definition of commutative property is that A plus B is equal to B plus A, for any real numbers A or B. And again, we're noticing that the terms are just in reverse order on either side of the equal sign. For this example, we'll use real numbers. We are going to replace the A term with the number two, and we'll also replace the B term with the number eight. So two plus eight on the left side of the equal sign is equal to 10. And on the other side of the equal sign, eight plus two is also equal to 10. And we know that 10 is equal to 10. So we can say that this is an example of why the commutative property holds under addition. So addition is good. What about subtraction? Now let's look at a minus b equaling b minus a. And again, we'll replace the a terms with twos and the b terms with eights and check out this example. 2 minus 8 on the left side of the equation is equal to a negative 6. And then we can head on over to the right side of the equation, the reverse order, 8 minus 2, which we know is equal to positive 6. Now, of course, we notice a problem here because negative 6 does not equal positive 6. And so this example helps us to understand why the commutative property does not hold for subtraction. So to quickly summarize, we know now that addition is commutative, but subtraction is not. Moving on to multiplication now, let's look at the definition. A times B is equal to B times A. Again, hopefully we're starting to notice the pattern of commutative property here that the terms are the same, but the order is reversed. So in this case, for this example, we'll replace the A term with the number four, and we'll replace the B term with the number eight. And let's go right to it. Four times eight on the left side equals 32. And on the right side of the equal sign, eight times four, the reverse is also equal to 32. We know that 32 is equal to itself. So this example can help us to understand why multiplication is commutative. So now we can check out division. If division is commutative, then A over B would have to be equal to B over A. So let's go ahead and replace the A and B terms with the same numbers as before, four and eight. On the left side, we would have four over eight or four divided by eight, which we know equals one half. And on the right side of the equal sign, eight over four, eight divided by four is equal to two, 
Again, we have a problem here because one over two does not equal two. So this example shows why the commutative property does not hold for division. We now know and understand why multiplication is commutative, but division is not. Some final words here on the commutative property. We know what the commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication looks like. And the main thing to remember here is that it is the same terms in reverse order.